I don't I don't know if I should have done this video right now, but the title's gonna gonna kind of say a lot of it. Um, it's just gonna talk about my mum. Uh, it's gonna be quite hard for me. Um, there's a big story here, uh, so I guess if you're interested, I guess you can stick around. But I can understand many that this is this everyone you know everyone has a mum. Everyone has a story to tell. Uh, I've been meaning to do uh, content covering my mother uh, for quite some time uh, due to just how complex it is, and I'm aware that there are there are similar families uh, in, in sim you know, similar situations of, of all sorts of, particularly in the UK and obviously all over the world, uh, with, with all sorts of disabled parents and uh, parents with brain injuries and, and cancer and obviously all sorts of uh, issues which I'm well aware of, uh, but we have our own. I, I've we've had a, I've had a moment of wild ride. Uh, we've had some sad news today that she's passed away, uh, in hospital. She went to the hospital about hospital about a week ago. Um, she wasn't well. Uh, I can get into that in in a, in a moment though. Uh, which is which is very sad and uh, to see my brother and my father and to talk and things, but. I, I, I've been meaning to talk about it for a long time. I don't really know how to put it in. Um, it, it's been such a thing. So, like, when we we live in a small, I was, I was sort of brought up on a small farm in the middle of the UK, uh, middle of England, literally, literally, almost in the middle. Um, it is a prime area of farming in in this area, of the in this area of the country. Um, and for the most part, I mean, I, I when I was a kid, uh, it's a relatively normal life. It's was, it was lovely. I, we, due to, the, I think, the nature of my parents and farming being good in, in the early 90s, uh, we got to go on quite a few holidays and, and got to go to experience like Spain. And I, I just remember when I was young, I was always going on holidays and things. I think even when I was like, uh, I have tinnitus, which I think was initially fought from... Uh, when I traveled to Disneyland or went to Florida, they went to Florida when I was like a very, very young. Uh, and I think the air drip, the, the takeoff on the airplane or maybe the landing uh, messed with my ears. And that's maybe where that came from. But I was, I was very young. I was like a few months old, apparently, uh, when I went to, when I went to America. So that's the only time I've been, um, there were stories, apparently I got passed around the plane and things cause I was a kid or whatever. And baby, you lose the baby down the aisle or whatever, but that's it's interesting. Um, but I didn't even realize I had sort of tinnitus until a few years ago, which is quite interesting. I've, I've definitely had that pretty much my entire life, from what I can remember. Um, but yeah, I just remember always going on like, sort of nice holidays and things between school. Uh, and my mother was, unfortunately, as well as my was. Uh, my father was never, has never really been overweight. Uh, neither was my brother really growing up actually he played a lot of rugby and I played a lot of rugby too uh, in, in clubs and for school and uh, as well as obviously other clubs and things and other, other activities at school but uh, my mother was quite large unfortunately uh, and so was I and I think it was mainly because I was obviously a bit of a whinger uh, and we'd always have like crisps and treats and stuff in the house so I, I just unfortunately ended up getting quite fat I don't know why it could also be jeans as well because uh, even even now I've put weight on and I don't even really know how because I, I still only have like one meal a day so it's just this is bollocks uh, I haven't been riding my dirt bike for like a year, so I need to get back into that. That's definitely a thing. Um, but anyway, so I, I unfortunately I was very overweight, and so was my mother. But it never really seemed to affect it. She was very, uh, I, I remember very, very uh, sort of easygoing lady uh, in that in that area. Very happy, very high. It was just very nice. I don't really remember. Uh, I mean, she would get upset, but she'd never really sort of be uh, raise her voice or anything too much, you know. Um, there, she was very social. She was involved at the school uh, I was at for uh, for a long time in like the sort of uh, board meetings and being like a uh, I can't remember what it is now, but basically being involved with a lot of the sort of choices and things that get would get done at school. Uh, and she was very social, and I had obviously a lot of friends I'd made at school, and there was always quite a few parties. So I feel like it was a relatively sort of normal time until so I think I was about I can't really remember this. <laughs> And I, I could if I really thought about it or if I asked, particularly I talked to my dad about it. And it, I had some counselling a while ago and I had to sort of go through all this again. But 
uh, I think it was about when I was about 11 years old. Uh, she, before I was born, uh, she was very much into her horse riding. And I believe had an accident, not on her horse, but on her sister's horse, from my, from my understanding. And it threw her off. And as she fell off, I believe she, she hit her head uh, on, a, on a concrete pavement. I don't think it did. I don't know quite the details here. But she was never good from that. And I believe from this point as well, she had a lot of issues. And I think she ended up developing a brain tumor. Uh, in the place she was hit, hit on the head, uh, ultimately in that area, and it, it caused quite a lot of issues. I can't remember if she had surgery before I was born. I think she had surgery after I was born uh, on a on a head for this for this sort of reason. And uh, when I basically when I was about eleven years, I didn't really know any of this. She was, I say, you didn't you wouldn't have really known <clears throat> if there was anything really Ill, uh, Ill with with her, particularly at that point. Um, but I remember basically, yeah, 11 years old, I, I woke up and uh, I wasn't at school, um, which I should have been, I think. And that was weird because I overslept. And uh, I, re I remember there was, there was paramedics and stuff in the house. And I think at this point, maybe maybe there was more paramedics than I was aware. I don't know. But from my understanding that basically she'd had a, she'd had a fit in the, in the middle of the night. Uh, my father was obviously with her and... Uh, called an ambulance and then she took to went to yeah went to hospital. But I think she had had a ultimately had a stroke uh, and it had left her paralyzed down the left hand side of her body. Um, and that's kind of where ultimately the the life for us and the, as a family very much changed uh, completely. I, I wasn't really prepared. I don't think actually. I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone's ever prepared for any life changes, are they? Really? When I had my back accident, I didn't really. I didn't really go out saying, mm, "Yes, this is this is what I'm going to do today." Um, no, it's it was so. Ultimately, yeah, I think she had ended up. Uh, uh, having a stroke and yeah, just left her paralyzed down the left hand side, and this had included her speech, and um, she lost like a, her speech, and even so, I don't know if she could even sort of think properly at, at that point. Uh, and I, I remember from this point when I was, I think I was in about year, I'd just gone into like year eight at school, uh, and for that following year, I basically I, I felt like I did all right at school, but I must have done shit. Obviously, uh, my parents and things weren't at home. I was still obviously having to go to school, uh, and my parents were. My dad was spending a lot of time going to see my mum in hospital, which was at various different hospitals at the point. Uh, she was getting moved around a lot. Uh, depending on the speciality due to her head injury and things. Um, and so I'd, I'd go and see her quite a bit as well, but ultimately I, I was on my own quite a bit in that period uh, when she was in hospital. And and as, as weird as it was, she didn't really recognise, I don't think really recognised anybody. She couldn't really talk at this point. Uh, and the only thing she used to do and do is, is with her her left hand side, oh her right hand side. Sorry, she would just sit there and and bang a cup, um, uh, and that would that would be the sort of method of communication we would <clears throat> we would really ultimately get out of her. Uh, over a, a given period, uh, the next few years are still pretty tough. Like we, we had to sort of manually move her around. There was no electric wheelchair or anything like that, and obviously I was still going to school. But she was. She did eventually come home after about four, when I was about 16, after about four years of hospital, uh, and she eventually stayed in sort of some form of like sort of care home style, but she eventually got a bit better to basically come home. Um, I think she could talk a bit at that point as well, getting some of her speech back. Uh, she couldn't walk still. She still had to be, still had to be moved around uh, manually by, by us and things, and uh obviously I, I was thankful at this point i guess we this is a given point where we started having care workers in the house uh which was grateful for obviously my father and the rest of the family we didn't have to get involved in and obviously the her needs for like say going to the toilet and things like that but um yeah that was where and this was in our old house we had a small little cottage uh which was very small at the time um and i guess i, I guess at this period i guess that's been probably my, my father was working on the farm, was changing at this point. There was houses being built on the farm, even though the farm still exists. Uh, at that point, it was, it was there was a house getting built for this. So, um, yeah, it, it was it was 
it was very odd. Uh, and the carers were here from like sort of, I think, I think about any from like six or seven o'clock in the morning to like sort of nine in the evening. So it was a long time the carers were here. Uh, and needless to say, obviously, the social life of like my parents dramatically changed and started noticing people, people didn't want to, people that were obviously quite nice before didn't want to come and see her and things. And uh, that's, I guess, understandable. Um, but uh, I, I can't really talk, I guess, a lot about a lot of that. It was just sort of what it was. And uh, I can guess I can say it was probably when I was in like college um where her health started getting a bit better like she was starting uh she was starting to sort of do like physio in, in order to try and see if she could walk again and she actually did ended up uh, with a stick being able to sort of fairly walk again and have some quite good mobility her speech definitely got better um to the point you could kind of have a conversation with her um this quickly developed in her th that she could then speak again after quite a number of years she was definitely a different person. I, it took me a long time to realize it, and obviously due to the brain injury, um, there was definitely a different attitude towards me and the family in general. But uh, she was still, still fundamentally, obviously our mother at the end of the day. But there was definitely a big personality change, and I, I as I say, I can understand that. But at the time, it was a bit weird uh, to to sort of go through it, but without understanding what's going on. Um, and she just basically had, a, had different goals, I guess, at this point. And she became very obsessed with creating a charity, which I'll further talk about, called uh, Enable You. I'm, I might see if I can put a link to it in the description. I'm not too sure what's going to go on with with this charity. It, it took up. She was very passionate over it, and she it, it took up a lot of her time. And I guess it, it did understandably keep her busy. Uh, and I'm sure she has helped quite a few people with with doing this charity, but uh, it did take away a lot of her her sort of almost ability to, com to communicate, at least with me. I felt because I, I didn't really feel like I could talk with her um, without, unfortunately, something becoming an issue or something becoming a problem with me. Or it uh, there was a say there was a severe brain issue there that. That upset me so much at given times that I did wonder to still sort of record her behaviour, but I I always knew that wasn't fair. Um, uh, it, uh, if I because it's it's you were just exposing a, a brain injury at the end of the day, and I, I don't want to do that. I and I just didn't want to almost sort of, you know, I it just I didn't want to sort of pick on or anything like in a bad way. It was just almost like as I didn't understand. I guess again at that point. Um. You know, I didn't understand. The brain's, uh, the brain's a, a funny thing. Um, and so we just lived with it. Uh, there's definitely been some highs and lows with, with the whole situation. We've had, as I've said, care workers here pretty much every day. Uh, the only time there wasn't care workers here was kind of for a brief period in the lockdown uh, a few years ago, but other than that, we were, there was always even Christmas Day. At a given point, there was there was always carers here at least. Um, and so I'll be honest, that's kind of killed a lot of like the family feel that that if it was there, it was there. It was very hard to have that because uh, it, you can't really have a private sort of family conversation when you've got some no offense some some stranger in the room it's very weird uh at least for me it was always very uncomfortable um there's always always people passing comments about certain things um she did write a book uh i have not read it i think there is probably parts of it in about me um I didn't think I'd actually be doing this, but here we are. I, I ultimately will be probably going through her book. Uh, whether I'd even do an audible version of it, I might well do. Uh, I don't know if it's going to need further editing. I think it did get overseen. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. It's not been published, but she has written a book. Um... And so I think for the sake of the channel, not as my point, but it's, it's her story. Um, 
I, I I will go through that as as it goes. Um, <clears throat> there's also uh, growing up, we had a lot of uh, family videos, and again, they probably won't mean a lot to some people, but in in terms of a capture in uh, in time, I think stuff like that on YouTube is pretty good, uh, and. A number of years ago, my brother uh, put a lot of our old family videos uh, uh, on DVDs for her. And so at least there was some sort of... If anything, that helped a lot because it obviously helped her kickstart some memories for her that were probably core memories of our childhood. And so aside from the stuff that's probably like school plays, which I think is all like illegal now and obviously stuff like that, uh, I think the home videos are very sweet. Um, I, I, I've kind of struggled to watch them because that was a very different period in, in time. But I, I think ultimately people like them, maybe. I, I don't know. So I will probably alter, uh, go over those as a way of preserving them. Uh, I'll put them on the channel. Uh, which would be... It's not going to be that interesting, maybe, but it would be a different audience. It would be a different demographic, whatever. It's, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> It doesn't really bother me. Um, it's 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 a bit weird with this 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 whole lockdown. Her health was generally okay. Her speech, um, like she was still being able to sort of walk until so I'd say about six months ago, where uh, some of her muscle mass and things definitely deteriorated that she couldn't really walk much again, uh, and her speech started getting worse. And that the last time I really saw her, I, I honestly, I I couldn't understand a word she was saying. She was talking to me, but I couldn't understand. Uh, it's, it was very, very, very hard to understand what she was talking about. And that's obviously got to be very upsetting for her as well. Um, due to the nature, I believe, of the, of the brain injury she had suffered, she had always had moments where she would fall over. And thankfully never had anything too serious. Uh, until I'd say actually, honestly, probably about a month or so, she had quite a bad fall, uh, which I wasn't very impressed with. She was, she was very, she she had an injury that made her bleed quite a lot from that. I was I was not I was not happy with the condition. Unfortunately, it was it was very hard. But, uh, I'd honestly say not that was that was induced to to her, but yeah, definitely definitely did not help her. Bless her. Um, So it's been a long way. It's been like 20 years since then. I'm like 32. I think I'm like 33 this year. Well... When I was sixteen, um, in that in that age as well, I I can even dial it back a bit actually to to go on what I want to say, but um, oh fuck the. Uh, basically, when I was thirteen, um, I I just need to remember, like, sort of twelve, thirteen. Uh, I just sort of got the Xbox, and it's because one of my good friends had got an Xbox as well, and we'd, we'd played it. But general, we were fans of like the PS2, and then this isn't about video games, but this this is this is a big thing for me. And this is this is the channel in in a nutshell. Um. When I was 13, uh, I ended up getting Xbox Live. And as I said earlier, that was when she was in hospital. So for me, <laughs> if you can, I, I bought it up. If you can imagine, I, I spent a long time on my own. Uh, she was in hospital with my parents and my brother was at university so I was literally just on my own 
I'd get taken to school maybe by my like grandparents at the time or by like my uncle. My dad actually sometimes, took, most of the time, took me to school, but I'd usually come home by by someone else. And so my evenings, I I just go on like I thankfully was able to get Xbox Live. Um, I said distinctly when I was like sort of thirteen, and the, the Xbox for me in that era, particularly till I was like sort of sixteen, became a, a, a big social thing for me. <laughs> Because I, I was overweight and stuff at school, so I had a few friends, but not, not many. I was definitely not like in the in the it crowd, and I was considered like a sort of weirdo or whatever. And uh, I, I basically, gaming like became a big thing for me, just in general, just like for online. And we had a it moved. I moved from the Xbox to to the new Xbox three hundred and sixty when when that was all a big thing. Like, so yeah, when I was like sixteen, and. Uh, I, I wanted to do videos and I was doing stuff with like Photoshop uh, like for clan banners and stuff. This was on Game Battles for like MLG, Gears of War. I've talked about it before briefly on the channel. And uh, it, th that was a big thing. We, we ended up actually going to a tournament in Birmingham uh, and ended up coming fourth, which was a shitter. But um, it, it was a big part of my t life that I unfortunately got told to stop wasting my time with because gaming, this is probably what, 2005, 2006 or something. Uh, gaming was definitely considered like a, I, I don't know, just like a geeky, a geeky thing. It wasn't the, it wasn't the industry. It was now. Um, and I remember buying a capture card to try and get that to work. And my PC was so shit. Even though it was an all right Dell PC, my PC was so shit, it couldn't even fucking record properly. It, without, like, it would capture like two, three frames and it would just die. It was so shit. And the software back then, I feel like Windows XP was so bad as well. And so what I ultimately did is ended up capturing footage using like a camera, like perfectly placed in front of the screen. My, my first sort of montage is of like content was 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 that and that was i say when i was like sort of 15 and 16 and uh ultimately like, i basically ultimately i used to make like banners with like anime girls and like soldiers like shooting and stuff and i used to make them all like hydro uh you know like, uh like flashing and stuff and it'll like look really cool and have like your clan tag in it and your, and your gamer tag and all that sort of stuff um I don't know what happened to any of that day, so I must I must have just wipe it. That's on an old hard drive or something. Uh, but honestly, uh, with, with school, I, I guess I went to college. Um, I went to two colleges. I kind of dropped out of both, I guess. Uh, the first one my dad signed me up to uh, because I was losing weight and I was focusing on my health, and I, I had to leave sick form. <laughs> Um, I went and did a course there that I didn't really want to do. And then considering the choices that colleges provide, I went and did a kit course I kind of wanted to do, which was public services. And I kind of dropped out of that after like sort of like nine, 10 months. Um, and I, I just went and got a bar job and I ended up getting like sort of bar supervisor and it got to a point where after a few months of that, I got sick of the actual customers that I was dealing with and would rather just pot wash in the back and help sort out some of the other staff members when they needed help and then just leave it at that. And, uh, I didn't really want to be, a, on the, on the cashier and stuff. And ultimately I think, uh, the management changed and the new manager just didn't like me. And I, I basically just sacked me when I was late one day. I was like, great. But I did that for a few months, and then I was unemployed for a while. Yeah, this was probably when I was again like eighteen, just turning nineteen, and uh, my parents were very upset that I wasn't working. I wasn't earning money, uh, so my brother's girlfriend told me about a job opportunity at a local warehouse, which is kind of a bit like Costco, uh, but smaller chain in in the UK called Booker's uh, Cash and Carry. And it's actually one of the better jobs I've ever had, to be honest. Uh, even though the positioning, I'd, I'd like to have moved up better than I did. But I ended up working there for like five years. Um, I learned how to be a butcher. Um, uh, I gained quite a lot of skills there, on, on whether retail and just life skills in many ways. There's a couple of people I met there that were particularly very influential for me. Um... 
I never really considered gaming in this period. You know, gaming disappeared. I, didn't, I maybe played like once or twice a year. That was it. That's all I did. Um, then I went, and then after that, I was uh, I, I, I was under a significant amount of stress at a given point in my, in my life. There, like my cat passed away. My brother was very much pushing me to be. I was his best man at his wedding, and he was putting a lot of pressure that he wanted a massive like party overseas in like Germany or Belgium, uh, and I had to organise it all, and that was stressing me out. Uh, there was a girl or I was trying to date at the time that was all just causing me a lot of grief as well. Um, and there was something else that I, I just ultimately, I ended up quitting my job because I was just too stressed out and it was obviously wrong, but it's, it's just, it is what it is. And so after that, I got, I ended up getting a, uh, a butcher's job, at a local farm. And I was there for like a couple of years. Uh, and then that basically fell through and kind of from there, I, I had the Anglian job and then I got that fell through and then, uh, I went to do, uh, I passed my lorry license. My, my parents spent a lot to get my, well, I don't know, obviously, obviously I tried hard as well to pass the lorry license, my HGV class one and class two. Um... And I'm grateful I passed that because I found that very hard. It was very eye-opening for me. I, I learned a lot. And if anything, I learned that I didn't actually want to drive a lorry, if it, if anything. Um, I should have also got my bike license at the same time, but I didn't. I should have done that. Um, ended up, on, one way or another, uh, due to some complications, I ended up having counselling, which was fine. She actually ended up getting told I was fine, which was not kind of what I was expecting, but okay. Um, and from that, I kind of inspired, and that's, that's with the sort of, just before the lockdown, um, where I, I ended up, I had the Switch, and I think a really rough computer, and that's where my sort of first sort of gaming videos, and I streamed on Twitch for like a year, and I'm grateful for the people that found me there, that was a really fun time. That's probably the better time that I've had on making this sort of content. Um, since then, I'd say it's, it's been really hard. It's been really hard. And why I'm saying this is that the, the only reason I've been able to do this now, the, the last few years, is because of my mum. Basically, you know, I this, this hasn't earned me any money. And... This is where I'm going to get upset again, but it's it's real, and I, I appreciate anyone that's watched this. I'm not, you know, it's not like a begging video. I've seen enough of that shit this last year of streamers and stuff, but it's just real, you know. If you want, if you're interested, here you go. It's, this is this is kind of it for me. Um, but ultimately, the, the yeah, it's it's been her. It's been the it's been the. the the sort of benefits that you get from the government that have helped both basically just help. I've, I've used a bit of that for my food, uh, for food to get, to basically just have basically just live and just try and try and make it in this. Because if it wasn't for that, I couldn't do this. I couldn't. And I haven't done a couple of videos for a couple of weeks and it's because of the health and because I've, I've been in a bit of a block because nothing I do seems to work. And, Actually, the, some of the best of videos I've done have been either hardware or something like Back for Blood, weirdly, did quite well. Uh, and then like, I did a headset review on the Razer and like the, the Sonys and stuff I've got, and that did kind of well for some reason. I'd love to do hardware reviews, but I can't afford to go out, you know, buying fucking loads of products and doing reviews on them every week. I mean, I'd love it. I'd do that all day if I, you know, I'd have a better camera. I'd have a better microphone set, better lighting and stuff. I'd do, you know, if people like that, I'd, I'd happily do that. That'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> it'd be really cool. Uh, but majority of the videos I've done have just been massive F. And, and I've seen a lot of creators and that, uh, to the point now, I'm pretty sure this industry, just like any industry, is paid to win. Um, 
you, if you want to be YouTube successful and earn money on YouTube, you can do it. You just probably have to pay for the initial boost. And it's one of those, if you pay for the initial boost of, say, 100,000 subscribers, 10,000 to 100,000 views on your videos, if people like you, then it, you'll, you'll get placed in the algorithm perfectly. But if people obviously don't like you, it doesn't matter how much you spend. You can't, you can't make it happen. Uh, I, I was a fool. I, I mean, I fought like 2013. Uh, when I saw some of the channels I was competing with, uh, like Monkey London and Car Throttle at that time, and uh, some of the few people uh, that would regular car reviews, I think, comes to mind, something like that. Um, there was only a few people really doing car videos, and particularly in that period, this was before, way before the Hoonigan came along and fucked everything up. Um, and made prices just insane for Japanese vehicles. Just, uh, just crazy. Um, and I remember thinking at that time, like, why why are my videos doing better? You know, why why can you why are you getting like ten thousand subscribers in a week sometimes? And I can't even get two in like a month. What what the fuck? And the thing is, if you look at the old car videos on my account, it's not like they've done bad. It's just that's the I, this is real, I suppose. This is how it is. It's real. Uh, Jamie YFD or something comes to mind. God must have. So basically, I, I thought all these people were real. It's only really come to my attention now the last sort of six to 12 months that majority of people, streamers, influencers, yeah, you know, have all paid to boost their stats and the subs. And there's only a significant portion of the actual viewer base is real. And it's it's a good portion still. And I, I don't deny that there are some legit, uh, that there are some legit YouTubers with real hundreds of thousands of followers. I don't, I don't deny it. But there is a big demographic of people that have paid for it just so they get put in the same algorithm um it's it's kind of crazy i actually wonder if my channel's been black flagged or something but uh but i i've tried i've learned a lot i've really tried i i definitely want to do more car content um i think i'm going to stream going forward really i i don't know if i'm going to really do too many videos now if there's some good content that i get then i'm i will probably make a video but I've been thinking about this a lot the last few weeks, and particularly, as, as I say, my mum's been very ill. Um, bless her, she passed away. I said, just actually, I think actually a few hours, uh, about twelve hours ago or so. I, I don't really know. Um, it's it's yeah, it's uh, it's. I, I don't know. I'm gonna obviously have to probably go and get another job at some point. I don't think this is sustainable. YouTube is just not. It's just not doable. I've tried. You know, I've I've definitely tried. I mean, my last year, I think I worked that. I made like 200 and, 240, 250 videos last year. I think that's about a video every three days. Uh, and and a lot of those don't tick. And what I mean by that is they don't get concurrent viewers. Like some of them, they'll get like ten views, fifteen views, twenty views. That's it. You know, they'll, they'll sit there for five, ten years, and they'll never get a single view. And I just don't understand it. Like, until you look at the homepage when you're not signed in, and then you realize just YouTube content now is just complete cancer. Absolute. I, I don't know who's watching that stuff on the homepage, but it's it's horrific. It's it's so bad. And I guess that's it. I'm just out of it. So I'd like to say I'd like to do car stuff, bike stuff. Uh... I might do more stuff like talking like this. I haven't, I, there's a lot of in real life stuff I could have done. I've never done it. I don't know if this video will even get uploaded straight away. Maybe. This will be one of those videos I'll never watch though. Because I, I find I find it really hard to watch. It's just something I'm having to do. And it is what it is. Uh, and on that though, I'm, I'm going to have to leave it there really. There's not much to say. I've kind of said what I wanted to say. Um, the future of the channel, I don't know. I, I basically, I, I considered I failed a few years ago, but I think we've definitely failed now. You know, I think if I was going to have a viral, a viral episode, maybe it would have happened, but no one cares. It's like Adam LZ. I looked the other day, he's still like drifting in Japan. Man, man's living the dream. I don't know how, again, I, I not to be rude, just pure view botting, I think, is initially where he's got to be where he is. Uh, I always wanted to do that, you know, go to Ebisu and shit and... Uh, not to be rude, the guy can't drive. He's probably better now, but fuck, man. It, stuff like that's pissed me off. People that can't drive, but they've got money, are able to get all these nice cars and go to these nice places. And 
it doesn't matter if they write off like an expensive vehicle because I'll just buy another one and it's all content for YouTube and they'll make the money back from the videos. It's like, yeah, well, great. I mean, my whole idea was initially that people like my driving style. Well, fuck, um, you guys could essentially afford to put me in, in positions around racetracks and other people's cars and sponsored cars, building you know, a, a faster vehicle and stuff, but I guess no one really wants to see it, and so it's not going to happen. It's, I can't I can't make it happen, really. There's a lot of stuff I'd love to do, but I just don't think it's... I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, but isn't that life? That's just life in general, so... Yeah. I'll cover I'll cover more details with I say over my mum with her book. Uh I don't know when we'll go through that. Probably later in the year or something when I'm ready. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm gonna have to leave it there. It's a bit of a drivel. Thirty five minutes. Thank you. Bye.